But there's another world that takes shells pretty seriously, the world of the military past. These 19th century engravings are both work and hobby to Marcus Hinton, a military historian concerned with the miniature. Mr. Hinton's military relics are part of his world of work. He makes model soldiers at his home in Maidenhead. But these lead figurines aren't made as toys. They are for the growing band of connoisseurs of martial detail. Perfectly accurate because Mr. Hinton designs and molds them with contemporary prints always on view. Here there's a genuine lead army of many military types being built. Guards, grenadiers, horse and foot soldiers representing all the great armies of the past. Unpainted, these two and a half inch high fighting men can cost as little as one and ninepence. But you pay two pounds ten and more for a model with a painted uniform that's correct to the last medal ribbon. Mrs. Hinton does a job just as delicate as the seashell craftsman. Military enthusiasts demand authentic detail, so this Scottish soldier's kilt and accoutrements must fit the picture. It might take two hours before he can stand easy with his contemporaries, or with a group of fierce fighting Vikings, or these Normans celebrating the Hastings anniversary. A tiny tableau shows an Austrian grenadier back from the wars. Every detail must be right. Constructing battles that really were fought is Marcus Hinton's hobby. Here's a British frontier fort under siege. And to further reenact the past, the Hintons carry on a tradition begun by 19th century Prussian army officers, the war game. A tabletop battle that's not just a toy town game, though it's worth getting into the right kind of gear. This game of chess on the march was a great favourite of H.G. Wells, who used to spread it all over his country cottage and out into the garden. But there's nothing rustic about this realistic battle between French and British soldiers of Napoleonic days. Sometimes the drawing room generals disagree about range and firepower, and only a tape measure can decide. But this time there's no retreating before the French artillery. The English are shelled off the top of the table.